Hello students, this is Mrs. Hinton, your school librarian. And the point of this video is to teach you how to evaluate a picture book. And this is a skill that you can use throughout your language arts classes, all the way through high school and college. Because if you can evaluate elements of a picture book, which is so easy to read and evaluate, then you can evaluate any type of book. So you can see right now I'm pointing to my computer screen with my video camera to show you the form that you will be filling out. We are going to talk about the different elements that you will be evaluating. So the first book I have here is to show a great example, an excellent example, of how to evaluate the text of a picture book. The text. When you evaluate the text, Consider the overall quality of the written words and story. Does it have a strong opening that grabs your attention? Does the middle of the story present a good conflict and advance the story? Are you satisfied with the ending? Now, this does not mean it has a happy ending, although children's picture books often do. But are you satisfied? Did the book lead up to the ending appropriately? Is the word choice appropriate for the intended audience? So when you read the book, one of the things you consider is who is the intended audience for this book? So this book right here, The Day the Crayons Quit, is an example of an excellent, perfectly written story. The great thing is it has broad appeal. You can read it to a TK kindergarten class. You could read it to a fourth, fifth grade class, and everyone would find something good in it. You can see it won a California Young Reader Medal, which means that students, just like you, thought this was the best book nominated that year. So when we look at the story, one of the things that we're looking for is does it have a nice, strong opening? And we see at the beginning of the book, we are introduced to the idea that a, a child named Duncan went to get his crayons, and the crayons had written him letters, and so he found this stack of letters instead of the crayons. Each two-page spread then has a letter written by that crayon in the crayon's writing, and the word choice is quite clever because for each crayon it really talks about that color. The crayons have different conflicts, different problems that they have, and there even is a conflict between two crayons, yellow and orange, who both want to be the color of the sun. So as we work our way, oh, and of course there's Peach Crayon, who's naked. As we work our way to the conclusion of the book, we see that Duncan has read all the letters now, and he wants to make his crayons happy. And so he comes with a very satisfying conclusion, where he creates an illustration using all the crayons in ways that they have suggested would make them happy. And he's figured out a way to clothe Peach Crayon. So this is a book which is a great example of a book that is well written. If you were going to rate the text of this book, you would give it a five. You would probably rate other elements of this book quite well too, but I want to move on to the next criteria, which is the pictures, the illustrations. Okay, a picture book is required to have excellent pictures, excellent illustrations. It's part of the name. It's called a picture book. Consider how the illustrations were made. Were they painted, hand-drawn, a collage, cut paper, photographs, fabric, digital, mixed media, using different types of art styles? Do the pictures match the story? Do the pictures sometimes tell the story? This is important because these books are often intended for young children who may not be able to read the words yet. So they have to be able to read the story by reading the words. This is a book with excellent pictures. It's called Sam and Dave Dig a Hole. You can see it won a California Young Reader Medal and a Caldecott Honor, which is for the pictures. And what's really special about this book, and some of you already know this, is that as Sam and Dave are digging for treasure, the audience can see where the treasure is. And then when they make a turn, the audience can see that they've missed the treasure, and so can the little dog. So here they are taking a break, and they're right above the treasure, right? So you think they're going to get it. 
But nope, they make a turn. And the dog says, uh-oh, you guys really missed the boat here. This is an example of the pictures telling the story. There are words, but the pictures are what show us how Sam and Dave keep missing the treasure. They keep making the wrong turn as they tunnel underground. Okay, so the next element that we consider when we're evaluating a picture book is the design. Now, a lot of you struggle with the concept of design. Well, what does design mean? Design is everything that really puts this book together into one package, into one book. We look at the cover, right? We look at the end papers. That's the page that's glued right inside the cover. We look at the layout of the pages. When you're looking at the layout of the pages, is the font readable? Is it the right size for the intended audience? Is there plenty of spacing so that the child can feel successful as they turn the page? Hey, look at me, I'm reading so much. I'm able to turn these pages. Do the illustrations and the text go together? And when we look at the cover, does the cover give us an idea of what the book is about? Does it promote the book well? We look at this cover, Don't Let Pigeon Drive the Bus, and we see Pigeon, right? And somebody is yelling, Don't yet Let Pigeon Drive the Bus, but it's not Pigeon, okay? And we see that it's one of metal. And on the back of the book, we always look at the back cover as well. Finally, a book you can say no to. Hey, can I drive the bus? No. Please? No. Come on. No. Will you let him drive? Well, no, of course not. That's the fun of this book is that you get to yell out no over and over again. So this is an example of an excellent design. They've put a lot of thought into the cover, into the end papers, into the layout of each page, and making sure that the illustrations and the text go together. And in our final end papers, we see Pigeon has stopped fantasizing about driving a bus, and now he's fantasizing about driving a big truck. The next thing that's important to consider when evaluating a picture book is the theme. The theme. What is the theme of the book? What is the author trying to teach us? Why did the author even write this book? It wasn't just for something to do. They have a message. What is that message? Why did a publisher choose to publish this book? How well does this book teach us the theme? So Chicka Chicka Boom Boom Boom, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom is an excellent example of a book with a great theme. The theme is simply to teach us the ABCs. That's the point of Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. But it's so fun with the vibrant tropical pictures and the way that the letters interact with one another. So children are exposed to the concept of the alphabet, but in a fun way. So this is a successful theme of a book. In this one, ABCs. That's all we're trying to learn. Sometimes it's a more serious theme that we're trying to teach. This one, Thank You Omu, teaches about sharing. The importance of sharing even when you don't think you have enough. In Thank You Omu, we open up with this character Omu who's creating this wonderful red stew. And as she cooks the thick red stew, the smell wafts out the window and people start knocking on her door. And as each person knocks on the door, she shares with them. And by the end of the book, when people knock on the door, she has nothing left to share because she's given it all away. Her pot is empty. But that's okay because now the neighbors have come back to share with her and together they're able to share a beautiful feast. So in this story, it does an excellent job of teaching us about sharing, how important it is to share and to reciprocate that when someone has shared with you, it's important to share something back so that person can enjoy as well. Another example of a book with a great theme. And finally, the last criteria that you're going to evaluate on a picture book 
is the engagement of the book, the interest level. How interesting is this book for the intended audience? How engaging is it? If you read this book aloud to children, will it hold their attention? Now be sure to rate the book for the intended audience, not necessarily yourself. You might say this book is not my cup of tea because I'm in fifth grade and I don't read a book for babies like this. But consider that this book is written for much younger children. How interesting is the book for them? Now press here, another California Young Reader Medal winner, is an excellent book for engagement. And part of that is because it is designed in a way where people interact with the book. That's perfect. Now clap your hands once. And then when you turn the page, look what happened. Whoa, clap twice. Three times. More. And that's what happens when you read this book. The kids get so excited because they get to clap and push buttons and press on things and rub on things and cry out. It makes them so happy. It gives them such joy. So press here is an excellent example of a children's picture book that has engagement that is interesting for the intended audience. And next I wanna show you how to evaluate the picture book using our picture book evaluation form. So first you need to write your name and please include your first and last name. Next, you're gonna tell us what grade you're in and here's a drop down. For me, it's staff. And what book did you evaluate? Now, sometimes when you're doing California Young Reader Medal or Battle of the Books, you'll have a drop down menu here where you can select which book title. But for now, I'm going to say that we're evaluating the day the crayons quit. So, who is the intended audience for this book? And it says check all ages that apply. Consider this when rating the book in the remaining questions. Well, The Day the Crayons Quit certainly appeals to TK and kindergarten, first and second grade, third grade where they do letter writing. And I'm going to stop it there. Even though fourth, fifth, and even adults can enjoy this book, I think the intended audience is more kindergarten through third grade. Next, it says rate the text. Consider the overall quality of the written words and story. Does it have a strong opening that grabs your attention? Well, yes, it does, because Duncan, when he goes to reach for his crayons, sees a pile of letters instead. Does the middle of the story present good conflict? Well, certainly, because the crayons are all frustrated that they're not being used the way that they want to be used. And orange and yellow have a conflict amongst themselves, because they both want to be the color of the sun. Are you satisfied with the ending? Well, yes, I am satisfied with the ending because in the end of the book, Duncan figures out a way to please all of the crayons and to clothe the naked peach crayon. Is the word choice appropriate for the intended audience? Absolutely. So I'm gonna say, excellent. The written story is perfect. Now you might disagree. You might think it's good, but there's room for minor improvement. It's satisfactory. It's lacking in some element. It's poor, has poor word choice or lacks a strong beginning, middle, or end. Or you might think it's very poor, unacceptable for a children's book. Next, we're gonna rate the pictures. A picture book is required to have excellent illustrations. Consider how the illustrations were made. Well, these were drawn with crayon, which is very appropriate for a book about crayons. I think it's perfectly illustrated because it looks as if a child created them, even though it was a professional artist. So I am going to give it an excellent rating. But again, whenever you're evaluating, you might say, well, the pictures are wonderful, but there's room for minor improvement, so I'm gonna give it a very good or the pictures were satisfying but lacking in something, they were poor, or they do not match the story, or they're just unacceptable. Next, we rate the design. 
we look at the overall design of the book, including the cover, the end papers, the layout of the pages, the back matter, and the back cover. I love the cover of this book because on the very cover, it shows the, the crayons as if they are to protest and they're holding signs, which is the perfect way to tell me that these crayons are going to be complaining about something. The end papers, of course, show lots of crayons, which tells us it's going to be a story about crayons. And throughout the book, we have these beautiful two-page spreads, which show a letter written by a crayon and a picture colored by a crayon. So I think the design in this book is excellent, and I'm going to rate it as such. But you might say it's very good, satisfactory, poor, or very poor. Next, what is the theme of this book? Part of the theme of this book is learning to get along with others. Because the crayons have to get along with each other and they have to be voice their opinion so that they can get along better with Duncan. So I'm going to put that down as the theme of the book. Next we're going to rate the theme. Well, What is it? What is the author trying to teach us? Why did the author write this book? Why did a publisher choose to publish it? How well does the book teach us this theme? And I would be torn here on the theme because I think it's very good, but I do think there is room for minor improvement, even though I love this book. And that's okay. You can have a book that you love and not give it all fives because something has room for improvement. And you can have a book that you hate and give it a five in one category because, for example, the illustrations are beautiful. That's perfectly fair. Finally, I'm going to rate the interest in this book. How interesting is this book for the intended audience? How engaging is it? If you read this aloud to children, will it hold their interest? Well, I can tell you because I do read it aloud to children, it does hold their interest. They giggle and they relate to the problems that the crayons are having. And they definitely find this book very engaging, I would say, somewhere between very good and excellent would be the rating for this and I'm going to give it an excellent because when I read this book the children are fully involved in the story. Now again be sure to rate it for the intended audience and not yourself. You, older student, might not find a book about crayons to be the most engaging story that you read but think about the intended audience. They use crayons every day it is something they relate to, and they love the idea of these sassy crayons having a point of view. And finally, the last piece is optional. Share any thoughts or comments you have about the book. You do not have to write anything here. You can leave this blank. But if there's something you feel like I should know that you want to share, then you can go ahead and write that. And I can say something like, I have read this book this book allowed to many classes and children. And that's it. I'm going to submit. And that's it. I'm done.